Good morning. Let's all rise as we begin. All together now. Sunshine in my soul today else can bring in the service of the king in the service of the king every talent i will bring i have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the king i am happy in the service of the king service of the king I am happy oh so happy all that I possess to him I gladly bring in the service of the king in the service of the king every talent I will bring I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the king joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart, your sins he'll wash away, your night he'll turn to day, your life he'll make it over anew, if you want joy,
It's good to see uh, Preacher Judy Banglista back. Amen. Okay, and uh, I think momentarily is away. So let's go ahead and request Preacher uh, June Laxina to please come and open us in the word of prayer. Let's bow our head. Let's pray. Oh God, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that you have gathered us in your house of prayer to give you praise and thanks, oh God, for all the things that you have blessed us with. Thank you for your many blessings that you have done to us, oh God, and for the protection that you have given us the past week, oh God. This morning, oh God, prepare our hearts and cleanse our hearts and our mind, oh God, and forgive us for our sins, that the message that will be given to us this morning will, will be effective in our hearts and our mind. Amen. And uh, we pray, O oh God, that uh, that you bless the uh, program that uh, we have for the young ones that uh, this morning, uh, the purity class, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, uh, it will be remembered uh, by the young people that it's, a very import it's very, very important for them to, be, to remain pure. Uh, up to the point when uh, they, they decided to uh, find their partner in life, oh God. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just want to give you praise and glory, for in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning to all of you. Well, we only have about uh, how many days? Uh, about... Uh, 14 days, no, about 10 days before our conference and 14 days before our 25th anniversary. I trust that uh, you are uh, well prepared for that, inviting your friends and being excited about this wonderful event uh, for uh, uh, the greatest uh, celebration IBC will have this year. And looking back for all the goodness and the blessings God has provided us through the years, the last 25 years. Okay, be sure to bring your friends, okay, and praise God that we have uh, uh, received some confirmation about people getting their visas to come to the States. And we'll be arriving uh, next week and uh, in two weeks. So we are preparing for a great, wonderful time with our pastors and preachers from our sister churches and from our friends and loved ones all over the world. And today, IBBC Riverside is celebrating their anniversary. So please pray for uh, uh, victory. Pastor Verhil Nolasco from, uh, uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia is actually their special speaker today. So uh, it's wonderful to uh, see Many works, many works of IABC also enjoying God's celebration, okay? And again, today is also a very special day for some of our young people, for uh, it is their uh, Purity Challenge Graduation Day, amen? Now, graduation does not mean it's going to be the end of their commitment, but uh, it simply means the beginning of their commitment, the continuance of their commitment for the Lord, it is a time when the, the world and the enemy will test how committed they are to the tasks that they have uh, brought before the Lord. So uh, they need a lot, of, a lot of our prayers. And uh, I really appreciate uh, Preacher Doja de Castro and his wife, Jenny, and those who participated and uh, for a wonderful job well done uh, for being able to complete the program in two years imagine that? It took them two years to finish the program. And soon we will also begin our next batch. Somebody asked me, Pastor, is it only for young people? You know, I don't care if you're 100 years old. If you want to uh, uh, join the Purity Challenge, go ahead and do it. Okay? I don't care if you've, uh, uh, whatever, whatever you passed this. If you want to join the Purity Challenge, go do it. Amen? It's not only for the young people. This is for all of us. To commit purity for the glory of God and for the sake of our testimony and for the ministry. So I'm excited about these young people. And I know they're going to be facing a lot of challenges after this. You know, this will be the time that the enemies will really work hard to get them uh, and to uh, tempt them and to uh, just try to hinder their uh, 
uh, you know, their, their victory and their effectiveness. And that's why we need to pray for them the more, and especially for the parents. And, uh, and for, for God to always uh, uh, be with them and His grace to be poured upon them. And for all of you who are here to witness this occasion, I want to uh, uh, welcome you this morning, okay, and uh, praise God for your presence. Let's all stand, please, as we sing our welcome song. Let's sing the song first, and afterwards, let's uh, go around and greet everybody, okay, and give them a warm welcome. Happiness is the Lord. While we're singing this, put some uh, happiness in your faces. Amen. Happiness is to know the Savior living a life. But in his favor, having a change in my behavior, happiness is the Lord. Happiness is a new creation, Jesus and me. In close relation, having a heart in his salvation, happiness is the Lord. Real joy is mine, no matter if teardrops are, I found the secret is Jesus in my heart. Happiness is to be forgiven, living a life. It's worth the living, taking a trip that leads to heaven. Happiness is the Lord. Let's go around now with each one warmly. Shake their hands, okay? Let's sing this song again. All right, this time let's show our happiness to the Lord. Happiness is to know the Savior. Do you know the Savior today? Hey. Amen. Let's sing the song again. All right. Happiness is to know the Savior, living a life, but in His favor, having a change in my behavior. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is creation Jesus and me in close relation having a part in his salvation happiness is the Lord real joy is mine no matter if tear from start I found a secret is Jesus in my heart happiness is to be forgiven, living a life that's worth the living, taking a trip that leads to heaven, happiness is the Lord. Thank you. Please be seated. This morning as the uh, Purity uh, class uh, ministry gets ready, uh, for the program this morning. Let's hear our first special number uh, representing our IBBC North Bay Bible Study Group, Preacher James Naurel Jr. Please come. Well, good morning to all. Um, on behalf of uh, North Bay Outreach, we do praise God for the, even the opportunity and the uh, blessing to even, um, you know, we start the work there. And um, I've sang, I rendered this song last Wednesday and uh, the entitlement is Only By His Grace. So just listen to the words. It is a great song. And um, praise God for this opportunity. <laughs> And one. 
washed my sin away. Now the fellowship is sweet as I worship at His feet. Only by His grace I have found this holy place underneath His wings of love, trusting in my God above, grace for every I'm preacher Doji De Castro, and uh, together with my wife, uh, Sister Jenny De Castro, uh, we are so blessed to announce today that we will be graduating our first batch of our Purity Challenge Ministry. Amen. So we had a very good uh, parent uh, teen night last uh, Friday, and truly it was a memorable night for the teens as the parents gave their messages to the teens, and we had uh, messages uh, and challenges from Pastor Julius and Pastor Hernes. And I, I really appreciate uh, the church for supporting this ministry, for praying for us. As you know, um, handling a ministry like this 
uh, we became the target of the devil's attacks. That's why the session was supposed to last only for a year or less than a year, but it took two years because of uh, many, many um, things. Um, and and uh, we felt it, we felt it. And please continue to pray for our teams because they will be too the subject of the devil's attacks. And I was uh, sharing last Friday a statistic taken from uh, uh, an institute on teens. And I mentioned, oh, 15% of teens are you know, sexually active. And I thought, oh, that's a, that's a big, uh, that's a staggering uh, statistic. But I didn't realize when I look at it again, it's teens that reach by the age of 15. And by the age of 19, there's already seven out of 10 females already had committed um, sexual activity. So it's very, very staggering. I, I stopped reading on because I, we saw the need. We saw the need. And it's not only um, with me and my wife with our daughter, but it's not only for girls or for boys, but I mean, it's all ages, even married adults. There's the issue of purity. The purity in not only in, in, in singleness, purity in marriage, and in whatever age, this is, a, it, this is a challenge for us. It's, every day is a big battle for us. And uh, we had fun with the youths for this past two years. Uh, they bonded uh, really well. We don't only have uh, sessions every Friday nights. But also we have fun, fun uh, days, uh, fun nights, or uh, activities outside. And this is to take their minds off, you know, the world. Because the number one from their testimonies, the number one challenge that they are experiencing is peer pressure. It's what's happening around them. It's what their friends are doing. It's what everybody they, they think around them is doing. And not because everybody, a lot of their friends are doing it, that means it's right. That's what happens when, when these teens experience temptation and fall into temptation is because of peer pressure. So I don't want to uh, prolong this introduction, but uh, let me call on our first special number for our pur purity young ladies. So we have uh, Catherine De Castro, Eunice Bautista, and Mika Havelona. Can you please come?
Thank you, Purity Young Ladies, and let me call now for to give her uh, personal commitment, <laughs> vow, and testimony. Let me call back uh, Miss Eunice Bautista. Good morning, everybody. Um, as humans, we are naturally sexual beings and impure in thought and in every aspect. And especially as teenagers our age, ages 13 to about 25, the hormones get crazy and I think all the adults know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so we've been having this purity um, it's purity challenge and each session every week for Bible study um, since two years ago and honestly I think two years isn't that long it it's really a building a building class that all of us get to know each other and we even have new new people come in every week um, but I just want to say and uh, give the message to just like the parents and those who have teenagers that I honestly learned a lot from the weekly gatherings yeah. that we had because uh, moving into a new school, Valley Christian in Dublin, even though it is a Christian school, there are still temptations that I face as a student and you know just as a teenager. So I really praise God for um, giving, giving uh, allowing God to have the vision to Preacher Dodge and Mrs. E. Castro. Um, I think when we had the purity challenge, just each session, I I didn't really appreciate the, uh, I mean like each, each lesson that we'd have, but reaching to this point where all of us are graduating, I appreciate it so much more just because I can say that, oh, I finished this purity challenge with everybody who I started with, and that's just a blessing for me. Um, it's been a challenge just keeping up, not only like sexually or anything like that, but even mentally and emotionally. You know, it's um, it's been a challenge because I I know that I don't go I, I don't go to every service uh, like every midweek service or at the night. So you know, it's a lot of the things that I deal with as an individual and as a teenager is very personal and the things that I can only connect with me and God. Um, honestly. As a high school senior that's graduating this year, uh, going into college, just the transition and the life that I'll be facing ahead of me will be challenging, uh, especially going into a liberal arts college in the fall. I know that it will be hard and uh, it will be a challenge for me and it will be a challenge for my parents because I know that they're always gonna be checking up on me. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited, but at the same time, I'm. I'm assured that uh, God will, God will have, God will uh, like remind me that this purity challenge was there for a reason, and it's I think the really perfect time because it, it we are graduating right before we go to college, at least for me and Kate, and uh, I think that that's when God will really test my faith and God will really test just well what I what have I learned from from this purity challenge. Um, so just to end with uh, just this testimony, I just want to say that I was, I'm was i so blessed to have a group of people every week, just my group of friends and especially Preacher Dodgy and Misty Castro who have been really persistent and faithful to keeping up with this ministry because um, honestly the youth, I feel like the youth is becoming a, a crumbling society in the world, but in IVBC it's not like that. So I, I praise God for uh, for this ministry and just my friends who are in it also as well. Um, to end, I just want to commit uh, myself. This is a vow to be pure, and I want to submit myself to God's disposal in staying pure in heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Eunice. Uh, see the father crying there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, not yet. Not <laughs> Let me now call on our next uh, uh, graduate uh, candidate, uh, Kate De Castro, my daughter. My turn to cry. Oh, no, just kidding. Good 
Good morning, everyone. Good my, morning. Name is <laughs> my name is Kate, and um, purity class was was like it was like an adventure. <laughs> At first, um, I felt kind of awkward because my parents were gonna be teaching it, and <laughs> it was just weird for me. But then, um, as the days like went by, I got used to it, and it got better. <laughs> I felt less awkward. <laughs> but then um, I learned a lot, especially about um, purity and everything and like your appearance and um, in school in terms of like sports or um, cheating. <laughs> but um, I faced a lot of temptations <laughs> in, in school or like in life in general. And purity class has helped me um, because I, whenever something comes up, I just think of the things we learn and the, and the memory verses that we had to memorize. And since I'm going to college, it's, it's going to be hard there because, oh, okay, my, <laughs> my family is not going to be there. And um, I guess college is really different. I'm going to UC Santa Cruz, so it's going to be a challenge, <laughs> especially the people around <laughs> the people around me. You know, they're they're not all Christians, and um, it's the right timing that we're graduating from purity, so I get to apply what I learn over there, so um, that I can retain whatever my parents have um, taught us, me and my classmates, and. I vow to be pure my um, my entire life and stay sexually pure until I'm married. And I'll always remember the things that I've learned these past two years. Amen. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> next is next graduate candidate is uh, Mika Habilona. Okay, so I didn't have an outline or a draft, but I'm pretty good with winging stuff, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so unlike Kate and Eunice, I'm not graduating high school. I'm currently in high school and I have two more years to go. And throughout my 16 years of life, I have seen a lot of impurity. And it's really disgusting because there's a lot of really messed up hormonal teens in my school. I go to a public school. <laughs> Eunice and Kate, go, they should be lucky. They go to a private school where they like have Christian-based teachings and education. There is no Christian-based education in my school. People are like, they're, people are like up against their lockers, up against the wall kissing. And I see that every day and it's just like, Excuse me, I'm trying to learn. This is a learning environment. I'm trying to learn here. And like, it really gets to me. I mean, like, for me, like, I didn't grow up in a Christian based home. I relied on my mom's knowledge of, like, morals. And my mom was a Catholic, and she always was. And so I just trusted her to teach me what was right and wrong. So, and I'm pretty sure, I know my mom taught me right. Like, I know my mom. I love my mom. She taught me right. And it's okay, mom, you can cry later. So, <laughs> so yeah, like, I, I'm just so thankful for my mom. She's guided me throughout my life. And if it wasn't for her guidance, I don't know where I would be. I really don't know where I would be. Like, I talk to her about my problems, and she, I'm pretty open with her. Amen. So, and my mom knows I've been pure. You know, I've been... <laughs> 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 I haven't done anything, like, I haven't done anything, like, it's sad, like, compared, like, in my school, like, everyone does everything, and it's just, like, I don't, because I'm just, I'm that, like, girl in school that's shy and doesn't even talk because, well, everyone's, like, weird, and, like, I'm the, considered the nice one, and, and everything, so, yeah, and I just submit myself to the Lord, I owe, Amen. and I, I, everything I have, I submit to him. I submit my purity, my soul, everything. And I hope that when I ask for guidance, he will continue to guide me, as well as my mom. I know she'll continue to guide me. She will continue to guide me. <laughs> and I have two more years to go of high school. Hopefully those will be successful years and I won't be as exposed to 
these really disgusting hormonal teens, which probably will happen still, and it will be disgusting for me. So, oh, Eunice and Kate, you guys are so lucky to be to have to receive a private education where everyone is like grew up in like a Christian-based home and everything because I didn't have that. I never had that, and it's really disgusting going around school seeing that. So, yeah, that's what I just wanted to say. And yeah. Thank you, Mika. I'm glad you find it disgusting. I know you continue to find it disgusting. Okay, um, next up is our Purity Men special number. So let me call on Anthony, Andrew, uh, Preacher Abe, Preacher Miko, and Miel. So we have more men. Stay. Let me call now the next uh, speaker uh, for his testimony, uh, Preacher Abraham Jr. Estigoy. I 
didn't send those pictures. I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is not my speech. I don't know what happened. Okay, I'm just going to read it because I usually preach, but I'm kind of nervous. Hi, Mom and Dad. Um, for people who don't know me, I'm Abraham Estigoy, and I'll just start reading this. Okay. People think purity is only related to having a relationship with a significant other, but it is much more than that. Amen. Being pure is a matter of cleansing one's heart to be blameless so that one can be pure in all aspects of life. Our main focus of purity challenge is dealt towards controlling the lust of the flesh so that when we're caught in a tough situation, whether it be drugs, a job, or simply cheating on a test, can overcome what may come before us through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. My favorite topic was about relationships and how to deal with the issue as a teenager living in a sinful generation today. Through the Purity Challenge class, it was uttered time and time again to abstain from being influenced into doing something that may affect our testi testimony and maybe even the rest of our lives. We performed various exercises that helped us work as a team and even shared the trials we face individually. Two of the most memorable testimonies I heard came from Mama Angie and Teacher Beth. The reason why I enjoyed Teacher Beth's testimony because she explained how Pastor Julius and her got together and I could see by God's grace how happy they are today and that is something I want myself. Mama Angie illustrated how purity is like a glass vase. If a glass vase breaks, it can still be put back together but the cracks will always be there. What I got out of it was our purity can be ruined and although God forgives, there will always be scars that we can't forget or take back. Purity goes for everyone, young, old, single, or married. It is a daily battle that doesn't end until the day of our death or, until, or if Jesus comes again. And that's why it is so important, because impurity can ruin our lives. I may not be perfect, in fact, I'm far from perfect, but I serve a perfect God who has a perfect son, Amen. and he will help me every step of the way. Amen. I have confidence that God will provide me a wife when the time comes. Amen. As of now, <laughs> I understand God must be my first priority, and as long as I'm headed that direction, I'm 100% sure nothing can go wrong. Amen. The only thing I could do now is keep serving God and try to be the best Christian I can be, because in all honesty, I'm still young and don't have the capability nor responsibility to engage with someone right now. I've already made foolish decisions and it has taught me so much already. I, I may have met the one already or may have not, only God knows, but I have no doubts that he will provide me someone with strong faith who's caring and loves God more than me. He will be the basis of our relationship and divorce will not be an option because God has designed us for each other. I promise, God's, God, I, I promise by God's grace to preserve myself and pray for my future spouse to the day that I see her walk down the aisle. And I thank God, the church, Pastor Hernis, and the DeCastro family for um, this program. And I'll leave you with the verse, James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, Amen. gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits with par without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen. Thank you, Preacher Abraham. What a, what a blessing, amen. Next is uh, graduate br Brother Andrew Goyeneche. Please come. Hello, my name is Andrew Guarnecci, and um, well, after after two years, we finally graduated. So. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a it was fun experience for me, and um, during Purity Challenge, we learned a lot of things, like how we dress. So we have to dress modest, and um, just because you see a cute girl doesn't mean that you're gonna marry her. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and um and our language too so like not cussing and what we say is appropriate and well when I went to public school before I went to Redwood um this was before purity challenge I, um, it was before PE uh, my friend offered me to go smoke weed with him, but then I refused. So I'm happy I did that because that probably could have ruined my life and my testimony as a Christian. 
And um, I would like to thank Preacher Doji and Mrs. Castro for giving the time of their day to teach us. And uh, Pastor Julius and Pastor Hernes for allowing this program. And my parents for, let, for letting me go and um, putting me in a private school so I can learn more about God. And most of all, I would like to thank God for this, for this to happen. And um, I would, I, I'll promise to stay up here for the rest of my life. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Andrew. I'm surprised you, there's more words today. <laughs> Amen. Let me now call on uh, Big Brother, Anthony Goyenache. Good morning. When I first heard about the purity class, I was hesitant, hesitant to join because I thought it was going to be uh, boring. And I wasn't sure whether I should or shouldn't because I also thought that it was going to be good for me as a teenager because, you know, the hormones and stuff. <laughs> um, some of my friends, like Miko and Kate, were able to convince me to join, though. I wasn't that excited about it at first. Um, you could say that it wasn't something that I looked forward to, but as time passed by and after a couple of lessons, it started becoming interesting to me. Uh, I was able to relate to the topics that were discussed in the class. I became eager to hear other people's testimonies and about their battle for purity. It did become something that, I, and it ended up becoming something I look forward to every Friday night. The testimonies and the stories were very encouraging and uplifting. What I learned was that purity is not just uh, pertaining to the sexual aspect of life, but also spiritual. Also, the battle for purity is an ongoing struggle as a Christian. However, it is a uh, Purity, uh, however, purity is achievable if you are not fighting alone. As long as you put your faith in God and have your fellow Christians backing you up, that, then you will be successful. It reminds me that nothing is impossible with God. And this course, this course was meant to be only a, a seven-month long course, but it turned out to be more than, a little bit more than two years. And I'm glad it was this long because it allowed us to go uh, more in depth into the lessons and also let me become closer to my classmates in the first batch. The closeness let us apply what we learned about having uh, our fellow Christians aid you in the battle for purity. Purity class was such a great blessing because we learned many things like about battle strategies, which were, uh, the, way, which were the ways we can win this battle for purity. We learned about things like radical amputation, which is to completely cut off the source of temptation or what is causing it, or what is causing us to sin. After radical amputation is radical consumption, which is to replace what we cut off with something that will help us to be better as a Christian. And I'm so blessed that I did decide to join because it is by God's grace that I was able to take this class. I would like to congratulate my, congratulate my fellow classmates for uh, making it this far in the course. And I also would like to thank uh, Pastor Hernes and Preacher Doji and Mrs. DiCastro for setting up this class. Now that we are graduating, I will still commit myself to strive for purity. I will probably fail at times because I'm still human, but my brothers and sisters will still be there to help pick me up. And most importantly, I know that God will guide me and give me strength in this endeavor. Thank you. Next testimony is from Preacher Miko Veloria. Good morning, everybody. As you have, uh, I've been introduced as Preacher Miko, and yes, that's my real name. Um, <laughs> So as we uh, draw close to our testimonies, here's mine. Um, in this class, purity be has become more than a word with an obscure meaning. It has become a goal, an integral part in each of our lives. Um, we were told in the beginning, as the rest of them have said, that this was going to be a 30-lesson course spanning about seven months. To give you an actual time date, we started May 13th, 2011, and today is our graduation date. Um, at first, 
I, I, as in agreement with everybody, I was hesitant to join. Then after a while, Purity Challenge became a haven of sorts. Uh, slowly we began being more open with our trials and temptations each week. Um, personally, I am quite thankful that God had burdened Preacher Doji and Sister Jenny's hearts to, um, to help the members of the, the high school aged youth and the younger ones to live a more Christ-centered life. Um, when we all began this, uh, the, the majority of us were in high school, and in, during that time, um, that's when people start, you know, seeking relationships and, um, you know, wanting to have a significant other. And we, um, mo all of us grew up in the church, and we, we, we all struggled, you know, regardless of the school we went to, we all struggled with that, with that pressure, you know, to, to, to like somebody, to be with somebody, and that desire, you know, to, to call someone our own. Um, what I believed, which is why I really did not want to have a, you know, be in a relationship at all until you know, God, you know, shows me who I'm supposed to be with was, um, before you begin a relationship with someone, make sure your relationship with God is where it needs to be. And also, don't complain that someone isn't up to your standards when you don't even strive for God's. Um, <laughs> in this class, we were taught how to defend and attack the situations that we came across. Um, the, one, the, the two uh, the defensive and offensive options that we learned about, the ones that really stuck to me were uh, one, the defensive was um, to not go near. And the, the way that really helped me was if you don't go near something that's tempting you, it's a lot easier to stay away from it. And um, the offensive tactic was um, introduced by a, because um, there are testimonies in the, the book we used, and one of the testimonies uh, was from a person who also completed this purity ch uh, challenge. And um, he said what he did was, whenever he was faced with a temptation or a trial, is he would begin to sing, you know, a Christian song or a hymn. And that's what I began to do because I, you know, if I enjoy and I love singing for God, I might as well do something to, I might as well do that to help me stay away from this temptation. Um, I keep jumping around these topics. <laughs> In purity, we were, uh, we chose accountability partners. Um, mine was Brother Anthony Goyeneci. Um, at first, it was odd because before this class, we didn't really have, um, you know, we, we didn't have much of a, a very strong friendship. It was, you know, we were more of acquaintances when this started until we began this class. Um, I really thought of choosing someone else closer to my age group, such as um, uh, Preacher Abraham or Brother Meal, because of how close we are in age. And since we were um, closer in age, you know, there are a lot of similar situations we could be in and I could, you know, be able to relate to somebody. But then I realized um, the reason why God put, you know, certain, certain um, uh, accountability partners together was he doesn't give you the people you want in your life. He gives you the people you need. And those people will help you become stronger as um, Christians and help you change, grow, and mature. And for me, it didn't just become my accountability partner. It became the purity group. And I'm so blessed that, you know, because we, when we started this group, there were almost 20 of us. And if you see right now, when you saw the, the, the young ladies and then the young men sing, there's only about eight of us left. So you could, you could see, you know, who really stuck with you know, what God wanted in their lives. And I'm so blessed that it's, you know, the, the seven others that are with me today graduating. And every week was filled with comical testimonies as well as ones that we, we hear how God is changing lives through this purity class. And at first, you, um, sharing testimonies about purity, you know, it's, it's weird because when we all started this class, purity was sexual purity. It was like, oh, I have to share, you know, if I was sexually pure. And after a while, it, um, we became open with one another and we became very close. We were able to share, you know, the toughest battles we've had to face as Christians with each other and we, we, we were able to know that there were you know, others who are facing the same battles and that we're with them to support them. Um, as I close, 
I learned not to expect God's hand to you know, appear in his shining glory coming down from the heavens to save me in my temptations and problems, but that I, I trust in him, that he has equipped me thoroughly, and that he has blessed, blessed me with people around me who he will use to, you know, to reach out to me. Because a lot of people, you know, Christians and uh, people who aren't Christians, they believe that when you are, you know, when what we think that God's, how he saves us from things is, you know, he, he comes down in all his glory, you know, rescuing us. But that, that doesn't happen. He, and then a lot of people say, oh, I'll just put my trust in God. But, you know, what I learned is, you know, when you put your trust in God, he will give you people to help you along the way. And those people were, you know, Preacher Doji, Sister Jenny, the purity group, even the, the older people in the YAFC, they were all there for us. And even though this did take two years, that was the whole challenge of the purity challenge. I think if it was only the seven months that we were originally given, we would not be here, you know, serving as faithfully as we could because we would have forgotten all of the things we have learned in, you know, just the seven months and getting a ring and that's it. Um, and I, would, I want to leave you with a verse in Isaiah 40, 31. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And as you see the first batch graduate today, I, I pray and I hope that you will be blessed by our testimonies being used by God. And I also pray that you will, even if you are not high school aged or a young lady or a young man, that you will strive to be pure your entire life, whether single, married, whatever your situation, you know, we, it is all purpose in us that we should strive to be pure. Thank you. Thank you, Preacher Miko. And our next uh, testimony, uh, last but not the least, uh, Brother Emil Vergara. Good morning. And they spelled my name wrong up there. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to start off like um, what Brother Andrew said that this uh, purity class was supposed to be a 30 day lesson, but it ended up being two years. And I'm, I'm really glad it's, it, um, like during purity, I wanted it to like hurry up the pace a little bit so I can graduate. <laughs> but now that we're graduating, I wish that a uh, purity challenge wouldn't end because I know that um, temptations in life w wouldn't stop. So going through um, life uh, with purity class would be a blessing. And going through it um, within the two years was a blessing in my life. And during purity, we would say a testimony. And one of the testimonies I said, well, um, this was during the first year of purity was uh, I was with my friends. They offered me uh, to, uh, to smoke marijuana, and then I rejected them. Amen. And like from that point on, I oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I n I noticed how how uh, how blessed I am to have um, preacher Doji and uh, uh, willing to go through all of this like he he didn't have to go through all this but he was willing to uh, help us and uh, the future generations to stay pure and I'd like to end with this verse that uh, Pastor Hernandez said on Friday uh, in Philippians 4 chapter 8 and 9 in part of chapter 8 or uh, verse 8 it says whatsoever things are pure Verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be in you.
Amen. Thank you very much. And we're moved with that uh, verse that we have that verse inscripted in their shirts. Amen. So um, we'll uh, hear more from them, uh, but we'll have our offertory for now. Uh, let's all stand and let's have our offertory. Let's all stand as I call on Preacher June to uh, please come and pray for the uh, offering this morning. If you're here for the first time, if you're a visitor, uh, you're not obliged to give, but giving is a part of our worship. Let's pray. Our gracious, loving Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for everything you have done so far. And thank you for the leadership of uh, Preacher uh, Dodge and uh, Sister Jenny for this uh, purity uh, challenge ministry that you have blessed our church, Lord. Thank you for our pastors, preachers, and members of this church, Lord. And thank you for the offering and tithes that will be collected, Lord, for the propagation of the gospel. And uh, we thank you so much, Lord, for your goodness, your faithfulness to your people. And may you be blessed by the things that we'll be doing in the church today. And may you bless all the congregations of IBBC and all the services. Thank you so much, Lord, and we just want to give you all the praises, honor, and glory. And we pray all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I obey you, Lord, the master of my soul, yielding my will to give my tithes and all, forsaking self to follow your command and obey you, Lord, and obey you, Lord. I honor you, my King, my deliverer, for the cross you Accept my gift to lift your name up to the world with this increase. I honor you, my loving Father. Thank you for the things you do, the love you show, your grace, and your mercy, too. I offer you the first fruits of my labor to thank. I worship you, my God, O oh Lord, I praise you. I magnify your name, express my love for you. With my life and all I sacrifice for you, I worship you. I worship you. Thank you. Please be seated and let me now call on the Purity graduates to sing a special number. Please come.
end of our program this morning, I will be calling on the parents of those who will be graduating this morning uh, together with their mentors. First and foremost, I would like to call on the parents of Ms. Eunice Bautista, uh, Mr. Gill and Mrs. Lori Bautista, together with the mentor. Of course, Mrs. Rexella Salonga is the mentor, but she is currently right now in Fresno together with her husband, Pastor Francis. Catherine May De Castro, I uh, would like to call on. The second one, I'd like to call on the uh, parents of Miss Catherine May De Castro, Mr. Salvador and Mrs. Jenny De Castro, together with her mentor, Mrs. Lindy Guzman. Next in line, I'd like to call on the parents of Preacher Abraham Istigoy, Mr. Abraham and Mrs. Venus Istigoy, together with his mentor, Preacher Roland Arenas. I'd like to call also on the parents of both Andrew and Anthony Goyeneche, Mr. Benjamin, and Mrs. Eugenia Goyeneche, together with the mentors, respectively, Mr. Jake de Guzman, and mentor, Pastor Francis Salonga, who is currently in Fresno. in line, I would like to uh, call on the, uh, the parents of Miss Mika Habilona, Mr. Lito Habilona, together with her mom, Milet Habilona, and mentor, Mrs. Nancy Bico. Next in line, I'd like to call on the parents of preacher Michelangelo Viloria, preacher Mike and Stella Viloria together with his mentor, preacher Francisco Laxina Jr. And last but not least, Representing the parents of Brother Mielino Vergara, Preacher John Mark Vergara, and Preacher John David Vergara, together with his mentor, Preacher Romel Atoy. Okay, so right now, um, we have these mentors, so they were chosen um, because of also of their willingness to guide them and they will be praying for them, they will be um, thinking about them, they'll be talking to them, they'll be there sort of like uh, Ninong Ninang <laughs> and uh, please pray, please pray for these uh, young people and also these mentors and uh, we will praise God for their willingness to do this. And right now, I'd like to call uh, up parents. You can give the rings to the to your no, don't don't wear them yet. Just just give it to them, and they will be in front here. Uh, just and then uh, purity graduates, please uh, go to the front, and I'll ask uh, pastors. So.
I'd like to express my congratulations to our graduates and of course their parents and all the witnesses. So today, purity graduates, you may put your ring now. Be sure to wear that all the time. Don't pawn it, okay? <laughs> on, the, on the right side, on the right side. It's on the right side. The left side is for married people. So. <laughs> I mean, and this purity ring will uh, symbolize their vow that they made today. And, uh, certificate. And, uh, and this would also remind them uh, in their daily lives, their daily activities, because it helps, right? When you see a ring, Oh, I made a vow. It's like uh, for marriage. Oh, I'm a married man. Amen. So I would like to give them their cer certificate uh, of uh, vows that they would probably keep near their room, their dorm room, or uh, to remind them of the vows that they, they, they uh, committed to in this purity class. And at this point, I'd like to ask... Uh, uh, one of the mentors, uh, Preacher Jun Daxina and Pastor uh, Julius, and uh, to close us in, in a word of prayer. And please, uh, to pray for the purity grad. Let's bow and let's pray for our um, purity graduates. Oh God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this time that you have uh, witnessed the graduation of the purity challenge uh, uh, students, oh God, and we pray for them that uh, they'll stay with their commitments that they have uh, um, uh, that they have uh, said here in the pulpit and that they will stay pure until the time uh, they are called by God to find their uh, uh, lifetime partner. And I pray, oh God, that uh, you will uh, guide them and teach them, O oh God. And at this point, may, uh, may I want to read uh, some verses that may be that they may be guides for this purity challenge graduates. First verse that I want to read is taken from Hebrew 13:7. States that remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Next one is Psalm 119.9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. The last one, 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And, O Lord God, uh, I pray that this uh, purity challenge graduates, O God, will stay to their commitment. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, Lord, as we approach, Lord, the most solemn part of this uh, purity. Uh, class, Father Lord, uh, ministry, O oh God. We want to commit to you, Father Lord, these eight people that, Father Lord, um, are graduating, Lord, today. Father Lord, they have received their certificates. They have also received, Father Lord, the ring. Father Lord, as the song that we have heard this morning uh, says, it is not based on our ability. It is not based, Father Lord, also on our um the opportunities that are given to us, but rather, Lord, it is only by your grace that, Father, Lord, that these young men and women can remain pure and that they can be able, Lord, to keep their commitment, O oh God. Lord, help them to be reminded that, as you have said, Lord, in your word, that if a man vow a vow unto the Lord, he shall not break his word, that he shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Lord, we are not the only witnesses before them, but more importantly, Lord, you are the main witness. You are the one, Lord, that who have heard the desires, Lord, of our heart, what we have said, even what has been committed. 
Lord, we ask and we commit to you, Lord, these eight people. Lord, give them, Lord, the grace and the strength to be able, Lord, to weather all the temptations that come their way. Most especially, Lord, in times when they are vulnerable. Father, Lord, today's occasion, Lord, is not only a message to these eight people or even the batch, Lord, that will continue, O oh God. But, Lord, there is a message in this for all of us. Lord, that there is indeed uh, a message for us, Lord, to remain pure in all the undertakings, Lord, that you have called us to do. Not only, Lord, to be as young people, but also as leaders, as preachers, as parents, as church members, O oh God. We have, one way or another, we have made a vow or a commitment. Lord, help us, Lord, to keep them. And Lord, thank you, Lord, once again for the partnership between our church, the parents, the ministry, the leaders, our senior pastor, Preacher Doji, Sister Jenny, and the rest. We just want to commit everything to your name, Lord, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let me announce you the graduates of the Purity Ministry First Batch 2013. And at this point, I'd like to thank all of you parents, mentors, Pastor Hernes, Pastor Julius, all of the uh, uh, couples that um, uh, gave a testimony. I appreciate all those. We thank God for you. And also I thank the youth. The youth have been very, very supportive of the ministry, especially when uh, they make sure that the trailer uh, is open. I don't have the keys, so they always make sure the Purity grad uh, Challenge uh, teens are dismissed on time. And I really praise God for the YAFC for supporting this. And the next batch will be in June. Uh, those of you uh, who wants to join, please sign up. And we'll be starting in June after the anniversary. So thank you so much. And thank you very much. And most of all, we thank God. Praise God. Pray, thank you. I thank also my wife for supporting me on this one. Praise God and thank God for all this, for his goodness. And now uh, let me call on Pastor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you very much again, graduates. Congratulations and parents. Congratulations and church. I really appreciate your support for this um, wonderful ministry. And of course, to Bridget Doji and Sister Jen, what a wonderful job you have done uh, for these young people. And I know that uh, uh, through their commitments and faithfulness, the Lord will continue to bless them. I'm not going to be uh, spending too much time in giving my challenge this morning. I just want to say a few words, well, maybe about 20 minute words, okay, in regards to this uh, purity ministry. I'd like everybody to please take your seats. We still have chairs here, okay, as we now go into the most important part of our services and be comfortable. Uh, ushers, please guide everybody to take their seats. We have lots of chairs here, okay? I want everybody to please be comfortable and uh, be here inside and take your seats. Thank you very much. Okay, I should just guide him here uh, in the front. My text is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 to 16. As you all please uh, go with me to uh, that passage. And I see some of our visitors and Ludus is here and your daughter. Thank you for, for coming. And some of you here for the first time and second time. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, 13 to 16, you don't need to stand up. I said, read this passage. Beginning in verse 12, it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy prophesying may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. May the Lord bless, bless the message this morning. If there were any man in the scriptures that could represent the young people of today, it would be Timothy, who was saved as a young man, according to some historical facts. Now let's look at the background of Timothy, so at least we'll know about his life. Timothy was born, uh, according to history, in AD 17. 
in Lystra, the province of Galatia, AD 17. He was raised by a single mother and also a grandmother. The reason why I said that, because his father was not really mentioned much in the scriptures. The only thing mentioned about his father was that his father was Greek. But there was, there, there was no statement or indications regarding uh, the contributions of uh, his father towards Timothy's uh, 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 growth. So it is possible that his father died early in his life or maybe left the family. We don't know that. We can just uh, uh, make, uh, make, make some guesses. Now, Timothy was, possibly was saved during Paul's first missionary journey. Uh, when he went to Lystra in AD 46 to AD 48 at age 29 years old and maybe much younger. Uh, it does not mean, though, that uh, uh, he was then instructed by uh, the Old uh, Testament scriptures. As we know, the Bible says that uh, uh, his grandmother and also his mother were so knowledgeable about the scriptures, Old Testament scriptures. So it's very possible that he was taught. Uh, ever since he was young, about the Bible, about loving God, about faith. And yet, uh, uh, he uh, had his first encounter with Apostle Paul at uh, approximately at age 29. And he started traveling with Paul in his second missionary journey in, in approximately in AD 50 to 52 at age 33 years old. So some of you can be able to relate with, uh, with, with his age and also with his background. He became the bishop or the pastor of Ephesus in AD 57 at age 40 uh, for about 15 to 20 years. He died in, 80, in AD 97 at age 80 years old, 80 years old, in the hands of the pagans who dragged him on the street and stoned him to death. Now, let's look at the possible scenarios in his life while growing up during his time, compared uh, and compare uh, his time to our time today. Timothy was raised up in a mixed religion and culture, which could have caused a lot of issues in him, one which would be the possibilities of being ostracized by the community, as you know, the Jews and the Gentiles were not actually in agreement with each other. And being uh, raised by both uh, a Jewish woman and a Greek man uh, would, would probably be difficult during that time. His father, although not mentioned specifically, was probably always absent from the home, which could mean that a single mother, with the help of his grandmother, raised him. Okay, and praise God for single parent, amen? There's nothing wrong, of course, although we uh, idealistically would like to have both parents to be in the home. But uh, by the grace of God, even if you're single, you can be able to raise, to raise your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So Timothy lived in a time when freedom was not a norm, which would mean that he never had any opportunities to express himself, just like uh, some of our young people today. A lot of things could have happened in his life, good or bad. But the Bible says he was able to overcome all those by living a life of faith because of the testimony of his grandmother, Louis, and his mother, Eunice. Considering the morality during his time, you know, let, let us not say that our morality at this time is uh, worse than uh, during their time. If you're, if you're going to look at history, we can see that during their time, especially uh, uh, because of uh, the influence of the Greek uh, uh, influence, sexual morality was a norm among people in all ages. See? The Greeks especially, the Gentiles. Homosexuality was rampant. Even leaders. Fornication. Okay? Adultery. All right? Not only... Uh, not, not, not only a lot of uh, uh, wickedness so rampant during his time. Many young people uh, got married early without the opportunity of growing up. And uh, so we, don't, we cannot think that we are worse today than before. Of course, we can only guess. So the life of a young Timothy could prove to us that God's grace and our faith in God 
can work wonders in the life of someone who is willing to trust and commit to righteousness, to the righteousness of God. That's why I really praise God for our young people who uh, made a commitment to remain pure, not only for themselves, not only for their future, but to God. Remember, you know, your commitment is not only towards, towards uh, people, not only towards your future spouses, but towards God. Amen? You're committing purity because of God, not because of marriage, not because of uh, this program, but because of God. Now, and so uh, I'm sure that the Apostle Paul was well aware of Timothy's aggressive hormones, just like one of you said during your testimonies. As a young man, full of excitement and energy, that he continues, Apostle Paul continues to give advices uh, to Timothy, that our young people also need today. I believe it is worth considering them today as you commit to be pure for God. Let me go through some of the uh, instructions or advices Apostle Paul based on this text in 1 Timothy chapter 4 beginning in verse 12. The first in verse 12 it says, Let no man despise thy youth. We have heard a lot of messages about this text. But what it means is this. That as a young person, you ought never to allow anyone to look down on you because you are young. Amen? Never allow your youthfulness to mock you, to insult you because you are young. You know, somebody says, people say, we are young once. So that means we ought to consider that your youthfulness is an opportunity. Amen? If you're young ones, take your youthfulness as an opportunity. Because if you will not take your youthfulness as an opportunity for God, you will lose it totally. That's why we always uh, hear a lot of those, oh, how I wish I've done this when I was young. See, you know, they were not able to uh, grab hold of the opportunity of their youthfulness. While you are young, because you are young once, take that opportunity and never abuse it. Amen? Never abuse it. Let's look at a tremendous power of youthfulness. Physical strength. Oh, believe me, I'm always almost 60 years old this year. And I've lost a lot of my strength. You know, before I, I could be able to lift uh, weights, uh, you know, that, that, that heavy. But now, not anymore. I could be able to uh, do a lot of things, but not anymore. So physical strength. What else? Incredible memory. Amen? You can be able to recall a lot of, a lot of things. You can learn so much. You can be able to absorb a lot of information. See? How about full of energy? Full of excitement. How about life and vitality? You know, when you grow older, you will miss all those things. Because there, were, there will be some times that you wanted to do uh, much, but you couldn't do it because you have lost the energy. See? How about uh, running on a full tank? Right now, young people, you are running on a full tank. Some of us are running on an empty tank. See? That's why we need to uh, get filled up, you know, all the time. And gas is very, very expensive nowadays. See? So take advantage of that while you're running on a full tank. See? Not, uh, not uh, 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 speeding on a street. See? But as follow as God directs you. But it says, Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. It means... Be a leader of godly living among the believers. That means young people, especially graduates, you have a responsibility to have, uh, to be an example to the believers and the unbelievers alike. Use your life to empower others in loving God and remain pure in hearts, mind, and action. And be responsible in all things. And be accountable in life. Get an accountability partner to check you out, to correct you, to remind you 
of your commitment to God. Being young does not always mean being irresponsible. Amen? Being young does not always, always mean being without discretion. Being young does not always mean uh, uh, making wrong decisions. Believe me, there are lots of young people who still make right decisions for the glory of God. So the, that's the first advice that Apostle Paul has given Timothy. Let no man despise thy youth, for you'll only be young once. Take advantage of your youthfulness and use it for the glory of God. Use that as an opportunity to live for God and to empower others. Second advice we can, we can get here is the is, is next pa passage. It says here, give attendance to reading. It means give attention to these things. It says here, give, uh, give attendance to reading, exhortation to doctrine. That means you ought to give attention to reading and learning the scriptures. Always be in the word of God daily. Amen. While, while you do your daily chores and daily responsibilities, never allow yourself to be kept away from God's word. The word of God must be your daily companion. Amen. You know, you know, oh yes, uh, maybe you might you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and talking with your boyfriend and girlfriend for four hours in a day. You know, why don't you, why don't you uh, have a date, you know, a spiritual date with your boyfriend and girlfriend and win the person first to God than, than winning the first person to yourself. That's what I've been telling. You know, before you win somebody else to yourself, win them to the Lord first. See, because it's very important for, for uh, the, the friends you are with to all have their personal relationship with God. So give attention to the scriptures. Also, give attention attendance or attention to exhortation that means focus more on ministering the reason why you need to be to read the word of god you need to learn of the word of god in order for you to be able to minister unto others to give advice to others you know to help others somebody said it's better to understand others than to be understood i like that statement you know, somebody, somebody's always making a statement, ah, nobody understands me. Why, why don't you try understanding others first instead of trying to uh, uh, make people understand you? I think if you're focused more on reaching out to others and understanding others more than trying uh, to uh, make people understand you, I think, you know, you'll, you'll have less, uh, uh, less misery in life. See? Now, also give attention to doctrine. That means the things that you learn, the things that you have seen, the things that you have served in, 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 in his word, and also in a testimony of uh, people around you, learn from them. The biblical standards, appropriate behavior, and also proper attitude, respect, honesty, spirituality, and of course, purity. Give attention to all these things. Now, the third advice that Apostle Paul also has given Timothy is in verse 14. It says, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Now, we can be able to apply this particular passage in many, many ways. Talking about the gift, the faith that is in thee. The grace that is in thee. Now, what I see here is this. Young people, not only young people, but all of us, that we ought not to forget what God has gifted us with. God has given us a lot of things. Amen. Praise God for that. Are you glad that God has given you a lot of things? Amen. So never forget all the things that God has given us. Such as what, young people? God has given you innocence. Enjoy that innocence. You understand a lot of young people have lost innocence because of what has happened in their lives. Because they have thrown their innocence, you know, to the world they have allowed the world to influence them now they are they are, uh, they are they are living in guilt they're living in anger because they have lost of their innocence because they have not been careful about their testimony innocence is god's gift to you say remember uh, adam and eve they were created innocent and because of sin what happened to them 
See, they lost their communication and their fellowship with God. While God has given you that wonderful innocence, then allow that innocence to be, to, to, to be cultured by God, you know, to be nourished by God, to be taught by God. Enjoy that. Now, how about sexual purity? Sexual purity. See, you do not only remain pure because of your future husband, because of future girlfriend, you remain pure because of God. See, you know, because if you only think of purity, well, I want to remain pure until I find my spouse. Now, when the spouse comes, are you going to stop getting pure? Purity is not only a sexual purity, by the way. Let me, let me enumerate to you some of the things I mentioned uh, last Friday in regards to purity. How about purity in thought? How about purity in words? How about purity in motive? How about purity in morality? How about sexual purity? Spiritual purity? Purity in action? Purity in testimony? And purity in service? That means, that means we need to be pure because God is pure. We want to be pure not only for us, not only for the sake of our spouse, future spouse, not only for, the, for our parents, but for the sake of God. Because if, you, if we are only pure for our sake, what happens is we make ourselves proud and arrogant. See? We want to be pure because we want to glorify God. Now, so neglect, neglect not the gift. Now, it also says here, in, in, in verse 14, meditate and reflect on these graces of the Lord. Meditate, reflect on them. Think of what God has given you. Spend more time reflecting on the blessings from God. You know, don't spend too much time uh, a, a kind of uh, a complaining to God what you don't have. See, appreciate what God has given you and use them for the glory of God. Give yourself wholly to all things God has given you until you begin to touch others and help others. And also it says here, keep them pure and free from the stains of the world. And by God's grace and by God's guidance and through the church and through your Christian friends and through your Christian leaders, you can be able to live a life that is pure for the glory of God. Now another advice that Apostle Paul has given to Timothy is in verse 16. Take heed unto thyself. What does that mean? It means that we need to pay close attention to who you are and what you should be as God wants you to be. Amen? Not who you are based on what you want to be. But who you are based on what God wants you to be. Pay close attention to yourself. Now you need to know that you are remaining in the right path. You are remaining in the right track. That you are not going to the right, you are not going to the left. You are remaining on solid ground. That you are standing on the proper foundation. That you are not allowing anything in this world, even your families, even your, clo your close friends, to get you away from where you are supposed to be standing. See? You need to pay close attention and un unto yourself uh, of, of who you are before God. Never give up the good things. But continue in them. Do you believe that what you have committed to today is important? It's a blessing. Never give up on that. Always remember that. Never give up on good things. But continue in them at all cost. And whatever it takes. Oh, believe me. The world will try to hinder you. The world, the world will try to tempt you. The world will try you know, to destroy you. The devil will try to uh, mock you and insult you. Just like when I was talking to uh, 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 one uh, you know, educator this week with me speaking in my office. You know, he told me the reason why, Pastor, you know, in public school that uh, Christians 
are actually being insulted in public school and they're being forced to get into wordiness and to get in sexual activity because if you are not pure sexual in public school, you are branded as a gay and you're branded as a lesbian. And so, you know, many Christians, because they don't want to be branded as a lesbian or gay, they'll just go for it. See? Or they're going to be branded as a nerd. You know what? Let us not care what the world says. Let us only care what God says. Amen? Let us not be dragged and be forced by the peer pressures. Because at the end of the day, our judge is God. Not our friends. At the end of the day, we're going to be facing God. We are responsible before God. So remain, remain true to God. And allow not the uh, peer pressures out there to get you away from what is true and what is real. That's why in Philippians chapter 4, there's a text I used in my message to uh, our graduates uh, last Friday. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, it says here, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. But you know what? You do not only remain thinking on these things. You need to continue on with verse 9. It says here, Those things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, what's the word? Do. See? Don't just spend your time thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. If you keep on thinking, you know what's going to happen? Huh? You know, you'll get crazy. See? Do. Apply. Implement. And it says, And the God of of peace shall be with you. So never give up on good things. You know what? If you focus on the things of God, this will not only benefit you personally, but you will save yourself from greater regrets and difficulties of the future. You know, don't be like others. Now, personally, I've made a lot of uh, uh, regrettable moves in the past. How I wish I could go back to the past and undo the past, but I could not do it anymore. Now, that's why I'm focusing, I'm more focused on helping others, see, to love God. Whatever I failed in the past, I don't, you want, I don't, you, I don't want our young people to fail, amen, because I know how it is to fail. I know how it is to make the wrong decisions in life. I know how it is, you know, to, uh, to, to uh, live in misery. I know that. See? That's why we need to learn our lessons. Okay? Now, and, and with that, also help others. Help others. Interact with others who love the Lord. And help those who are in need. And in closing, because of God's grace... We have been given a new slate. Praise God for that. You know, I said, oh, what, what, whatever has transpired in your past, you know, maybe some of you have not been so pure in the past, but you know what? Praise God. With God, there's always second chances. Third chances. Fourth chances. Because it says in 1 John 1, 9, what does it say there? If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Oh yes, look at the past. You've done a lot of bad things in the past. But one thing you can do about your past is bring it to the Lord. Amen. Cast it upon God. And the Bible says, when you confess all your sins to God, he will forgive you of all your sins. He will give you a clean slate. We can start fresh. And it's starting fresh. God does not care about the past. We can again begin to be pure. Somebody said, you know, Pastor, I didn't do well in the past. Can I become pure again? Yes, 
you can become pure again by God's grace. Begin today. See? Don't begin tomorrow. Because tomorrow might not come. Begin today. But the only way you can begin today is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you begin with God, God gives you a new slate. God gives you a new purpose. God gives you a new, what? A new opportunity. Amen? You know, God gives you a new responsibility. And with that, with those new things, remain pure in God's eyes and above reproach in the eyes of man. Consider all these advices. Again, to all the graduates, my congratulations to all of you. And I trust that you will also begin to encourage others, you know, uh, others who are coming after you. Encourage them. And those of you who are also enrolling in the second batch, I don't care how old you are, 100 years old, join Purity Challenge. Amen. Married, join Purity Challenge. Young people, join Purity Challenge. You know, I praise God we have two preachers in this Purity Challenge. You know, somebody asked me, they're preachers. Hey, that's good. Amen? In fact, preachers should be uh, the leaders in these things. Amen? You know, and, I, 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 and so let's pray for them. Somebody said, you know, why are we incorporating uh, this uh, graduation in worship? You know what? This is the right kind of worship. Because through this, we're glorifying God. We're glorifying God. You know, for what he can do in the lives of these young people. We're glorifying God with what God can do through the testimony of the International Bible Baptist Church. Again, consider, consider the words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy and claim that as his advice to all of us. Let's all stand, please, and let us pray. Let's have, a, let's have our heads bowed and eyes closed. Only we bow our heads and close our eyes. And as the pianist plays, I believe God has spoken through their testimonies, through the word of God, through the songs that have been sung and through the message from God's word. And because God has spoken is now our responsibility to take heed to all the things we heard today. I don't know your heart. I don't know your life. Or maybe you can claim Today, that you have religion. But you know what? Through spirituality and through Christianity is not religion. Through spirituality and through Christianity is relationship. Even if you have religion, if you do not have a relationship, you do not have the true Christianity. That means you can never enjoy eternity. And forgiveness of God. So the question you need to ask yourself. Are you. In eternal. Relationship with the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the pastor I have religion. It does not matter. I don't care if you're a Baptist. If you're, ho if you're only holding on. To your being a Baptist. It is not going to work. Because what you need to have is a personal relationship with Jesus. And without Jesus as your foundation, whatever you have committed will come to naught. Will be nothing. All our commitments will only be precious and important and secure only to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So the question is, do you have Christ in your heart? Do you know that you have Jesus in your life? Was there a time in your life in which you have repented of your sins and confessed Him before God and received Him as your Lord and Savior? The Bible says if you confess with your mouth with the Lord, Je the Lord, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in that heart, you will be saved. If you have not done that, then today is a day for you to be saved. Because you know what? There's no guarantee about life. There's no guarantee for tomorrow. But if you have Christ, there's a guarantee for eternity. Or maybe you're saved. Maybe you claim to love the Lord. See? But do you really love the Lord? Do you live for God? Now, young people, what kind of life are you living today? Are you true to the Lord? Are you taking heed to yourself? Are you true to God? Are you true to the commitment that you've made to the Lord? Maybe some of you here would also like to commit to purity. I don't care what you've done in the past. But if you make and commit to purity today, God will make you pure. If God has spoken to your hearts right now, if God has dealt with you right now, then you, can, then you come to the altar, you kneel where you are, and pray to God. Why don't you do that? Maybe there's some of you here who would like to come forward. To come to Christ. To get baptized. Why don't you come? Amen. Who else? Just come. Anybody else? Our Father in heaven, O oh God, again, we're so thankful, O oh Lord, for the testimonies that we have heard today regarding purity. Help, O oh God, these young people understand that purity, O oh God, is having your will in their lives, not their will, not their willingness to be pure, but for them to receive the grace of purity com coming from you. Because they don't have any ability to remain pure without you, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, for these young people, for these people, O oh God, on their knees right now. You know their hearts. You know their lives. If there is anyone here, O oh God, in our midst who is not saved, if there are people, O oh God, here who have some issues in life, O oh God, I pray that you reach out to them. Help them, O oh Lord, to be able to forget the past and bring the past, O oh God, to you. And live for the present and for the opportunities of the future. Oh God, we, th we thank you, oh God, for the opportunity. We thank you, O oh Lord, for this program. We thank you for the parents. I pray, O oh God, for these people, O oh Lord, who also came for baptism. I also pray, O oh God, for those who are coming in through the next batch of our purity challenge. Again, give wisdom. To preach your doji, O oh God, and his wife, Jenny. And again, I commit all, this, all the graduates, O oh God, to you. And their parents, bless them, O oh Lord. For we give you all the praises and all the glory in Christ's name. We ask all these things. Amen. God bless you and please be seated. Now this time, John, Matthew, come in. So you want to get baptized, right? Uh -huh. Okay. This John Matthew, what is your last name? Antiochio. Okay, Jen, this is uh, Brother John Matthew Antiochio. Okay, and uh, uh, you've been saved.